see what's inside. Is this the M cave? It's not really a rock cairn per se, but uh, clearly somebody stacked some rocks up here for a reason. I thought I heard something. It sounded like voices. Okay, I just heard phantom footsteps. See the blood coming through already. I just got stabbed by one of these freaking things here. That's the elephant we've named this huge rock the elephant because it kind of looks like a sleeping elephant. That very well be one of the most dangerous climbs we've ever done. Even this, look, there's no foothold. Okay, that's not good. If you grab something, you think it's secure, and it's not. This is the most dangerous thing I've ever done. I'm gonna try to jump for this spot right there. One, two, three. It's 9 a.m. on the northern outskirts of Las Vegas. We're heading out once again to the Desert National Wildlife Refuge for another expedition. Uh, continuing the investigation into Kenny Beach disappearance. It's, uh, it's a cool 54 degrees, absolutely perfect for hiking. You don't want it to be too hot, you don't want it to be too, too cold. So I think it's gonna be a great day. It's kind of been unseasonably warm this year. You can see Mount Charleston out there in the distance, kind of uh, dusting the snow up there. Still enough to open the ski resort, leave Canyon Ski Resort up there, and a lot of folks from Vegas go up there. It gets really crowded. But where we're going is the uh, sheep range, and there shouldn't even be that much snow up there. Let's keep on going towards the uh, refuge, and uh, we'll check back once we're there. Morning, everyone. My name is Steve from Las Vegas. These are my adventures. We're at the Desert National Wildlife Refuge, as you can see. 54 degrees, a little bit breezy, absolutely perfect day for hiking. You don't want it to be too hot or too cold. Um, I do have the military polypro on to keep warm and I'm wearing the uh, vinyl gloves. These make excellent glove liners. I can use the foam with them. Uh, they're disposable and I just put the regular gloves right on over them. So if you see these vinyl gloves, that's why they're absolutely fantastic glove liners. Now while we're here, about 10 years ago, a man named Kenny Beach walked into those mountains and never returned. He's been missing ever since. The only real clue we have is his cell phone was found by an old mine shaft out there. Now my last video, uh, if you remember, was Joe May Peak. We're going up in that same area towards Martian Rock. We talked about Martian Rock quite a bit out there. And what that is, it's a rock that another YouTuber, uh, Jay Silverheels, kind of branded Martian Rock. It's got some uh, strange writing on it that looks like writing. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be looking for Martian Rock and hiking in that area, head up towards uh, Flat Top and come down through the Really Robin Canyon. I'll explain all this once we get out there, trust me. It's gonna be a big loop and a big hike today, so I hope you're ready. Uh, let's hit the road and get out to the trailhead. Heading for the trailhead up Joe May Road here, and you can see snow on the highest peaks. I don't expect to get that high. That's probably uh, eight to nine thousand feet uh, towards the actual Sheep Peak. That made me Sheep Peak back there. So we're not going to go that high, but we are going to get pretty high up in the mountains. We'll probably run into a little bit of snow, but uh, we'll see once we get out there. We're almost at the trailhead, so let's keep going. Ah, uh, what a morning! Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Once again, we are at the, of course, Desert National Wildlife Refuge. Ready for you to Joe May Road, that is Joe May Canyon out there. Four miles that way is a mine shaft, an old mine shaft, very old mine shaft, where Kenny Beach's phone was found. The only facts we know about the Kenny Beach case is his phone was found in the mine shaft, so it's assumed that he hiked out there. His truck was left right here at the end of Joe May Road, and he never came back for it. What happened to him? I don't know. Uh, these hikes are inspired by Kenny Beach. Do I expect to find him? No but it is possible we will run into some kind of evidence of what happened to him. So that's what we're hoping to find. Um, a lot of strange things out here. We've heard of uh, phantom footsteps. Uh, there's, uh, your mind plays tricks on you. Strange voices, weird smells, missing time. Some people reported missing time. And of course the vibration that Kenny reported and also Jeff Claw reported the strange vibration. Who knows what can happen out here. We're gonna be going out that way towards Joe May Guzzler, heading into the hills towards Flat Top down towards where I believe Marsha Rock is into the really Robin Canyon. And we're gonna loop all the way around these mountains and come back this way. It's gonna be about half of Kenny Beach's loop. So it's not gonna be a massive day, but it, there may be some climbing and uh, climbing involved. So I don't really know what to expect till we get out there. I've gotta be prepared for everything. I've got the Garmin GPS, I've got first aid, I've got food and water in the pack, some tools, uh, a firearm if necessary. Um, and uh, of course boots, I've got the Matterhorn boots on. It's still winter time, we may run into some snow. Military polypro insulation, of course these uh, vinyl glove liners. I'll put my regular gloves on here in just a moment. That's it, I think we're ready. Let's head on out there and start the hike.
All right, and away we go. Go ahead and start the uh, Apple Watch here. We use Apple Watch for tracking our uh, steps. We're setting it to hiking, of course. And here we go. Now the Garmin's active, uh, full phone battery. Uh, one of the weird things that happens out here is of course the electronics shut off on their own. I've got a full phone battery and I've got a spare phone battery as well. So hopefully we'll be prepared for anything GoPro. I always have extra batteries for the GoPro. On the uh, Joe May Peak hike last video, I pointed out that cave out there. And for those of you who wanted to see it, I'm gonna go see it today. So that's where we're gonna walk right now and then we'll stop by that agave burn pit even though we've seen it in previous videos. And then we'll continue north towards the uh, Joe May Guzzler. See what else we could find on the way. All right, now we're here at the cave. We're gonna hike up here and I call this Indian cave. The reason is the Indians who lived out here probably used it as some sort of a shelter. It's kind of a path worn to it because obviously people have walked to this before. It's not much of a cave, doesn't go in very far, but let's walk up and take a look. Take a peek, see what's inside. Is this the M cave? This is not the M cave. Now look it up there, see that kind of tar kind of stuff? You see that in a lot of caves out here and I believe what I've been told is kind of a living organism. Sort of like a fungus kind of thing, but uh, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to disturb the, uh, the wildlife or the natural beauty of this place. I'm not going to really go in. I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like in here. And if you had to, you could sleep here and get out of the rain or elements. But that's it for the cave. Let's continue on. All right, up there is the Agave Burn Pit. It's one of the biggest ones out here, right here at the mouth of uh, the Jome Canyon. You can always tell these burn pits because they have uh, large piles of dirt with these white rocks on them. It looks like a tailings pile, but uh, it is an Agave Burn Pit. So I've always wondered if it's a burn pit, why are the rocks white and not black? Maybe somebody can uh, answer that question in the comments. At any rate, this is it. We're gonna hike up there and take a look. All right, so we're just walking up this burn pit. It is one of the bigger ones out here. But not much more than just a pile of dirt. We'll climb up there and I'll show you what's up. See kind of a walkway here. People have clearly been walking out here. It's not that far as the mouth of Joe May Road. So anybody hiking out here would have came out to check it out. I don't know if you can see my truck out there, but it's out there. But this is it. Strange. Kind of sounds acoustically different here. I don't know why. Maybe it's just my uh sounds echoing off my boonie hat. It is notable, the phantom footsteps. Um, I mentioned this in the uh, Joe May Peak videos, so hopefully you've seen that, you know what they are, but just basically it sounds like someone or something running up behind you. <sighs> when it happened to me, I was standing in a burn pit down there, so coincidence or is there something about these burn pits? I don't know. You can see this kind of indentation down here. I'm assuming there was a hole down there where that's where they would light a fire and roast agave. And uh, over the years, it just got filled back in. It's a pretty big, uh, big pit though. So there must have been a large Indian settlement here. And clearly this all would have had to been dug by hand. Um, I don't know a whole lot of other info about these. They just kind of look like tailings pile. You'll see them if you look on Google Earth, they look like a big, uh, a big kind of, um, lighter colored circle in the desert strange circle but that's what these are where native americans lived out here hundreds of years ago or even thousands of years ago but roast agave hearts for food but that's about it let's uh let's continue our hike and head up keep heading north it's 10 a.m so we're getting a much later start than we usually do and that's fine didn't see you need to come out here at the crack of dawn. And I want to get a little bit extra rest. It's kind of a rough week. I always say that, and it is a rough week. I work hard, play hard. Today I had breakfast at home. I didn't bring anything. I do a freeze-dried food. I think it's uh, 
breakfast skillet is on the menu if we do stop for, for lunch. And uh, what else? Cliff bar. It's always kind of rough getting back in the groove of things out here. Um, my legs are tired. I'm a little tired. Slide uphill incline. But once we get going, it'll be a lot easier. And of course, coming back, it's all downhill. If you look around, maybe off the distance, you can see snow at the highest peaks. It's probably 7,500, 8,000 feet or more. I thought for sure there'd be snow out here this week. It rained a lot this week, but there's not. And I was going to do a nice snow hike, but all it was is a wet, muddy mess. There wasn't really any snow, so I didn't come out here. But that's fine. I thought I heard something. It sounded like voices. I see my truck out there. I want to make sure somebody wasn't at my truck. Is it my imagination or something else? I'm telling you, of all the places that I'll probably Joe May Canyon is the strangest. Let's keep going. All right, on the clock, we've only gone half a mile, 775 foot elevation gain, 16 minutes. So it's about 30 minute miles about our normal pace. No worries. Look it up on these hills for anything interesting. Small pocket caves here and there. Most of these don't go in at all. It's really, it would be rare to find a cave that goes in any significant distance out here. And I've been through all through these mountains and I've not found any that go in any significant distance other than a mine shaft. There are some in Nevada. There are some in Southern Nevada, but not here. And as far as like going in miles for a, a, a natural cave, that's something I haven't seen out here. And I know Kenny Beach said the M cave is deep and dark, but you know, that's, it's a matter of opinion. Did he see it from a distance? Did he assume it's deep and dark? Look up there, that cave up there, that looks deep and dark, but it's, it's a cavity, get up to it, it doesn't go in more than a few feet. Is that really what the M cave is? Something that looked deep and dark, but didn't go in more than a few feet? Only Kenny knows and he's not talking. Let's head up there, if you can see that kind of high point, that hill ridge that's uh, kind of a yucca forest up there. We're going to make our way up on this hill and get to that yucca forest, and I believe at the end should be Joe May Guzzler. And we'll cut into the Guzzler, and, uh, and uh, from there, head into the mountains. I thought I saw something shiny up there. Maybe it's just a, a light-colored rock. Let's keep going. It's actually much warmer than I thought it would be. I had to take off the bottle gloves. My hands were starting to sweat quite a bit. From what I saw, the temperature here, the end of Joe May, is usually colder than Las Vegas Valley. It looked to be the same. Now this is January, it's late January. This is supposed to be the coldest time of the year. And yet we've got a 70 degree day on tap for next week. I'll be working, but I would love to do this. I'd love to come out and make a video. I do this every chance I can, but it usually comes down to maybe twice a month time permitting. But I'll tell you what, if this channel ever got to a point where I could do this full time. I would do, I could almost do a video a day. So at least three or four a week, I could probably, maybe three, you know, a lot for editing time, but I would need at least a million subscribers. So subscribe if you haven't, share the channel, tell everybody you can to subscribe. And if someday I do get a million subscribers and I could somehow make enough money to quit my day job, yeah, I'll do this full time. And then you'll see some really cool stuff. All right, so here's some of that yucca fruit. And uh, you see this in the springtime. This is in the spring, but here's a piece of it. Uh, looks like it's kind of hollowed out, but that's what it looks like inside. Um, this yucca fruit here. It's edible. You've got to roast it. And it tastes like potatoes, I've been told. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hang in there. And it just, uh, just kind of rots. Maybe animals have eaten some of it kind of rots on the uh, on the plant there but if you had to you could eat that <sighs> you know when, once the spring comes in you'll see them growing out here it's January so they're not really there yet and if the deserts you could feel uh, I don't know if you could really see it but if the ground's still a little moist if it's if it's a, a wet winter which it may very well be you may see a lot more yucca fruit than normal but yeah I'm expecting a slightly warmer than normal winter sometimes it snows out here but not, not this year. Let's keep going. That's a one mile mark on the clock, a mile. 450 foot elevation gain, 34 minutes. A heart rate 124 beats per minute, 126 actually, but who's counting? 
anyway, it's a, it's a little harder hike than, than normal. I'm not really out of shape. I'm just uh, kind of out of the swing of things. So I'm taking my time, pacing myself, slowly but surely getting where we're going. The highest point we're going should be the, the hills at top Joe May Guzzler. Once we get there, it should be, knock on wood, all downhill from there, hopefully. I believe that's Joe May Guzzler Canyon up there, off to the uh, left. So we're gonna start making our way that direction. Okay, like I said, out there is um, Joe May Guzzler. Last video, Joe May Peak, we hiked up at the top of these hills, came around, and if you could see that kind of low saddle right here, this, I believe, is the area we came down. And I was worried because I thought there might be a steep drop off, like, I don't know, most of these places I think I can make it down, or even up if I had to, it's tough, but you could do it. But right over there, uh, I think we came down right, right here. Okay, I just heard phantom footsteps. It's dead silent out here. It's like thump, 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 two of them. It's dead silent, there's no planes in the air. Clark County shooting complex is that way on the other side of those hills, so there should not be any echo. But it came from that direction somewhere. Just like a thump, 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 thump. But far off in the distance, not close. Not hearing anything more. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It just, like I said, just a thump, 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 thump right out there. Like the thump, the thump. And there was two of them weird anyway like i said uh that's what we came down last week right there and we're gonna head right up in this uh canyon there up in joe may now there's a uh agave burn pit out there it looks like it but out there is also where the uh that old prospect pit is it's it's a second mine in joe may canyon i'd like to see it we came out looking for it in the uh in the other lost mine video um there's a link up there if you want to take a look at that one never end up finding it but uh, it's out here somewhere and it's about that area the thing is do i want to hike all the way to that which probably had another agave burn pit or just cut across here and shorten our hike i don't want to hike out there if that's a burn pit and i think that probably is because we've seen burn pits before but uh we're going to keep going that way i'm going to come down here Looks like there might be some stacked rocks down there on that big rock. We'll check that out. And then we're going to head into uh, what I believe is Joe May Guzzler Canyon up there. So let's go. And uh, as always, if you see something or hear something I don't, uh, please mention the comments. Call it out. That, uh, that thumping was weird, very clearly defined. Now, Jay Chuck was out here earlier this week, and um, he saw a lot of fighter aircraft flying over. They do a red flag going on. There may be some bombing hear a 10 firing that's probably out in dog bone lake way over that way towards uh indian springs uh air force base but out here there should not be anything that was uh that was weird anyway let's keep going make our way down this hill into the valley let's try to take the high ground to avoid uh any unnecessary climbing, but since where we're going is right across the way, we're gonna have to come down here, cut across. I think that'll be the best option. Now the phantom footsteps I just heard, uh, this GoPro media mod microphone is pointed towards me. If it was pointing away from me, you might've been able to hear him. Maybe he heard him anyway, I don't know. But uh, if I hear anything else, I'll certainly call it out. All right, here's these strange stack rocks uh, that we saw back off at a distance. It's not really a rock cairn per se, but uh, clearly somebody stacked some rocks up here for a reason. Look inside, is somebody being buried here? I don't see anything, do you? I sure don't. I just some rocks stacked here. Some sort of a marker, I guess, maybe. I don't know why they're stacked there. 
anyway now we got to do is just cut across the desert towards uh, the Jewel May Guzzler and uh, keep on going bones as always it's not uncommon to find bones out here here is uh, clearly part of a spine I'm not gonna touch it in a reason to but uh, you can see these bones are old sun bleached and uh, it's just not uncommon to find them out here something large uh, bighorn sheep or deer perhaps about the size of a human but I don't think that's what it is but you never know at any rate it's just uh, it's just one bone and we're gonna keep going I admitted to the uh, not the what I believe the Joe May Guzzler Canyon which is right inside there and I believe it is and uh, we're gonna head up there and we need to go is kind of on top of those rocks all right folks just said I wasn't on my a game you can see the blood coming through already I just got stabbed by one of these freaking things here um, so yeah what I'm gonna do is apply some first aid I'm gonna take off my uh, boot and uh, see how bad this wound is damn it that's why you got to pay attention out here all right, first I got some wet ones. I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean the wound as much as I can with these wet ones. Just clean the blood off and, uh, oh my God, I could see a weld. It may have gotten the muscle or something, I don't know. Just wiping the blood off. Hopefully that's not poison or anything. Jeez, that's not good at all. All right, so that should hopefully disinfect it. I'm gonna put some Neosporin and a Band-Aid on this and continue the mission unless it hurts too bad. I thought of some Neosporin antibacterial cream I don't all I have is alcohol prep swab so I'm gonna clean it with alcohol then uh, uh, bandage it up and hopefully that'll do the trick all right it's not perfect but I did bandage it up a little bit the swelling may be going down a little bit and the bleeding stopped it doesn't hurt or anything but uh, it did stab me pretty good and bled quite a bit out there so um, hopefully that's the worst thing that happens today let me pack up this first aid and uh, put it back I'm disappointed I don't have any of that uh, antibacterial cream I could have sworn I had some in here so that's gonna be uh, it's gonna have to uh, suffice for right now this should remove all doubt as to how dangerous the desert can be it's so easy to be stabbed and this stuff is it's very hard and as you can see can stab you pretty good in the leg if you're not watching earlier in the video i said i'm not on my a game today and i'm not so don't think you could just drive to las vegas just moseying the desert do a nice little hike out here and there not be dangerous danger is everywhere folks all right my leg i've uh it just goes to show you got to keep your first aid kit current. The Band-Aid I used uh, works just fine, but it's so old and it's been in the desert so many times, the paper backing was sticking to it, so I'm going to have to maybe get some fresh Band-Aids. The alcohol prep wipe that I tried to clean this with, the only one I had for disinfectant was bone dry. No alcohol on it, so i got to replace alcohol prep wipes. And I thought for sure I had like some Neosporin or antibacterial cream in there. I don't. And I, I think of everything, believe me, I over-prepare, so alcohol prep wipes uh, antibacterial cream and uh, maybe some fresh band-aids in the kit my leg itself feels perfectly fine almost like i didn't get stabbed um if there's any pain or anything i'm gonna have to make that trek back it's it's almost two miles back to the truck so if there's any worse than this you'll probably be in some big trouble god forbid knock on wood a snake bite or something um but i feel fine the leg feels fine if it starts hurting i'm gonna stop it and slowly turn back Thank God it's all downhill. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna do what I was trained to do in the military. Just goes to show you, even an experienced hiker can have mishaps out here. Perhaps that's what happened to Kenny Beach. Perhaps he had a mishap. Kenny could have been in some forgotten canyon. Got bit by a snake. Couldn't move on or even twisted his ankle or broke a leg. Fell off of something. Couldn't move on and got stuck out here. Myself, I do have the Garmin and I can uh, call for a rescue if need be. Kenny didn't have that. So whatever happened to him, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. The Joe May Guzzler, Nevada Department of Wildlife. This right here catches rainwater, puts in this trough, flows through those pipes down to those tanks. There's a water trough by the tank. There's also game cam down there, but I don't think I'm close enough to trigger it. Um, during the summer months where it doesn't rain, and I didn't know this last time I came out, how do you think they recharge these when it doesn't rain? How do they get water these animals? 
Nevada Department of Wildlife, in cooperation with the U.S. Air Force sometimes, use a helicopter with a firefighting bucket. They'll fly over here with this firefighting bucket, they'll dump it right here. All the water flows down in this trough, just like it rained, and recharge those tanks for the animals. That's how they recharge the guzzler in the summer months, so the animals always have water. We're not here for the guzzler. We've got to get up and over these mountains over there. So yeah, there is going to be some climbing. Um, that wound in my leg feels okay. Um, you know how sometimes you uh, kind of poke yourself with a needle in your finger and it hurts like, hurts like hell for a few minutes and then after that it's fine? That's kind of what happened here. I don't think those plants are poisonous or hazardous or anything. And I do feel perfectly fine to continue going. I would not continue going if I didn't feel fine. But uh, that poke sure, sure woke me up. And the bleeding stopped pretty easily. So um, we're going to keep going and get up through these hills and try to get to the top of those hills on over right now. That's our goal is to get up and over this mountain right here. So yeah, we're going to have to climb here and get up to that rock up there. Watch you for snakes. I don't think there are any, but you never know. It's uh, warm today and I just want to be prepared for anything. So we're carefully walking up these rocks. Just doing a little bit of climbing. Came down here last weekend, so it's not a big deal. We were out two weeks ago. Now, holding the camera right in front of me, but my eyes are glued to where I'm stepping make sure I'm stepping on solid ground and there's no snakes or anything close by. Man, what a workout. You see the snow-capped peaks of the Sheep Mountains out there. That might be Sheep Peak. Like I said, I'm just not on my A-game today and you saw the results earlier of what can happen if you're not in your game, so. I'm gonna keep going and focus on the plan for today, which is to get over here to the flat top and uh, continue on towards Martian Rock into really Robin Canyon and then back down and begin the hike around the other side of this mountain range back to the truck. This is this is the mountain range Kenny Beach hiked around for his famous hike, so anywhere in this in this set of mountains is a candidate for the M Cave. Uh, Kenny Beach's uh, phone was found up there near mine shaft a couple miles up this way. He may very well have doubled back to hike these mountains. It's really hard to say, nobody knows at this point. But uh, we're gonna keep going and try to get to the top here. Whew. Just keeping a close eye on my leg. Like I said, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still putting forth, after putting effort on it and uh, pushing myself. But um, if this starts hurting or anything strange or unusual, I'm going to, like I said, slow it, turn back and just take it easy going back towards the truck if I have to. But. I'm not gonna turn back if I don't have to. Like I said, just uh, being mindful of that injury. Even stuff like this, this is extremely dangerous right there. They look beautiful, but they're not. The desert is full of danger. Every step, potentially. Even the seasoned explorers. You can see Las Vegas out in the distance pretty easily from here. Um, that's north end of Las Vegas, and this lone mountain straight ahead, I'm pretty sure. And uh, the top part of 215, um, Red Rock Canyon area, the end of Lake Mead. So yeah, I mean, you could see civilization right there, but make no mistake, where, you, where we are here is extremely remote. You could scream as loud as you want, nobody's going to hear you. If you were to call police and somehow get a signal, it would take them, take them some significant effort to get out here. And then once they did drive, say, to the end of Joe May Road, it's a good two-mile hike to get where... Where we are right here so make no mistake about how remote this area is but right now we're going to continue the hike we're almost to this uh top of this rock here which i believe is a uh, three-quarter point and then we'll continue on towards the uh the summit made to the top of this kind of rock outcropping <laughs> got a great view and a steep drop off that's uh probably 50 feet that's uh might not even be survivable. It's a bone break and fall right there. All right, so that's why we're not gonna get too close. Jome Valley out there, mysterious Jome Valley. Las Vegas off the distance where we gotta go is uh, 
is right up here somewhere. So, all right, back down there, a little plateau or a little high point. Put on our gloves, fresh GoPro battery. We're almost at the top. We're just kind of uh, we climbed the steep part and uh, we're just kind of making it crossways now towards the summit where we were last week and. Hopefully flat top is right over there and we'll make our way to flat top. And I'll show you what that is once we get there. Well, I just roll film, we're almost there. Almost looks like some footprints. This may very well have been my footprints. It probably was from last weekend. Almost there. Oh my goodness. Keep going. All right. Come over here to this kind of saddle over yonder. And we'll be able to see what's on the other side. And if we're where, where I think we are, flat top of Marshall Rock should be right over there. Now keep in mind, I haven't seen Martian Rock. I don't have the coordinates. Don't know what to look for. All I know is it's a rock that has some weird designs that look like Martian riding on it. All right. I think that's maybe where we had lunch last week. Maybe. I heard a call behind me. I think it's that pesky crow. Hear it? Yeah, it is. I see a flying bird out there. Is that a crow or is that Jay Chuck's winged demon? The winged demon that people talk about. The Batman that they see way up on the cliffs. Are they mistaking a crow for a winged demon? I don't know. Oh man. Okay. I think I may have, uh, I may have miscalculated. This might be flat top right here. I'm gonna have to check the GPS. But over there might be where we had lunch. And uh, over there might be where that ram skeleton was. So we're definitely going to come down right here to this area. I'll check GPS and we'll look in that canyon and see if there's a way we can get down. Because that was a plan to go down that way into really Robin Canyon and make a way down to the desert floor. Hopefully there's a way we can do it safely, but I'm not going to take any unnecessary risks. Not being a little more tired than normal and having been stabbed earlier in the leg. All right, give me a minute check GPS. All right, so I checked GPS and this is flat top. Um, I think we had lunch up over there and we came, yeah. So last weekend we had lunch over there on that peak and that's a great view up there. Bighorn sheep skeleton is on the side of the cliff over there. We came down up this way, came over here and we walked down there towards the Joe May Guzzler. And uh, we were going to kind of skirt the hill over here. Now this big mountain is what I call the elephant in the last video. Um, because from a distance it looks like a big sleeping elephant. So what we are going to do is go around the other side and check that out. But first we're going to go to flat top and uh, at 11.50 I'm a little bit hungry. We may have lunch if there's a place over there. Otherwise if there's nobody getting this canyon we're going to see if we can skirt behind the elephant here and see if there's a way in the canyon over there. If not, we'll come over here and I may go into one of the canyons over there. Um, this this big huge canyon, I believe, and again, Jeff Claw, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is really Robin's Canyon. And really Robin is one of the original YouTubers in Canyon Beach case. And uh, for some reason just mysteriously disappeared, stopped posting. There is another really Robin channel, but it's not the original one. Um, but at any rate, this I think is really Robin's Canyon. That was our plan to get in there, but I'm not going to scale down a cliff if there's no safe way to get in there. I'll just uh, continue on. But for right now, let's head down towards Flat Top and check this out. Now, Flat Top, this plateau over here is what uh, Jay Silverheels, another YouTuber, branded Flat Top. Um, I think it was him. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Silverheels, Warlock Wrath, a lot of these guys that uh, know these areas probably even better than I do come up with some of these names but uh at any rate this i believe is flat top and we're gonna walk to it right now pretty sure this is it nice flat area it'd be an epic place to camp we're gonna day camp here i think this is where we're gonna have lunch find a place to sit down in just a moment but let's let's walk around and see what this this is all about you can see the cliffs over here steep cliffs 
I don't want to get too clo too close. I almost lost my pound there. That would not be good. That would not be good at all. Because it's a long way down over there. Oh my gosh, that's almost intimidating to look at it. I've been in Niagara Falls. This looks like Niagara Falls here. I mean, it's just big, wide open, intimidating area and it's extremely steep. All right. The bighorn sheep skeleton was over that way on the side of the mountain somewhere. There's two small caves down there. Man, I wish I had a drone with me to check those out. Look at those. I don't know if they go in at all. It's not an M, put them both together, they're an M, but uh, yeah, look at it right about, you can see them somewhere around here. I'm trying to see if I could see them in the camera. Maybe it's down there. I don't know, anyway, they're down there in the, in the frame somewhere. I would love to check it out. I'm not quite sure they don't go in very far. I can, I can use the binoculars. I'll use the binoculars to check them out. If they went in, I'd certainly climb down there. Now, all these hills you're looking at, obviously right here is a cliff, but if you look around the side over here and here and here and here and here, I can do that. I can climb down that stuff. It's dangerous, it's tough, but I can do it. The only problem is once I get down to this canyon, which I believe is really Robbins Canyon, once I get down there, um, if you run into a dead end or something or another cliff, you may have to climb back up and that would exert a lot of energy. And A, I've been stabbed earlier on my, my leg. B, I'm just a little bit tired today. And um, I don't want to put, exert myself too much. I mean, it's like I said, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. But I am going to pull out the binoculars once we find a place to eat and check out those two little caves down there and see what's in them. Let's come on up here and see what else we could see. Man, the view up here is just breathtaking. Look at this. Amazing. Yeah, this, this would be a perfect place for lunch. This has got to be really Robbins Canyon. I think it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, Ken, uh, Jeff Claw. Um, I can get down there. I can make it down here. And the original plan was to go down there and then down there to the desert floor. But I've seen some of these little kind of uh, draws down here. They come to like a cliff, even a 12 foot cliff is probably a little too much for us to jump down. And I don't want to get to a point where we come down there and we're kind of stuck in a little area and we can't get out of it. That's that's my biggest worry. So I don't want to risk it. So what we're probably going to have to do once we have lunch is uh, come back up a little bit, go that way. And I don't want to get myself, like I said, down into something that I can't get out of. All right. Now around here somewhere is Martian Rock. And again, Martian rock is nothing more than a rock, kind of a big rock, I'm assuming, that's got what appears to be Martian writing on it. But a lot of rocks out here have what appears to be Martian writing. Even down there, it looks like it could be Martian writing. It's really hard to say. A lot of it's natural. I did do a video, um, was uh, alien, alien rock or something, and that was a rock I found in Picture Canyon on the beast, which is probably a mile or so that way. And it was a rock that looked like it had some very distinct patterns on it that I thought was alien writing. And we did kind of an analysis video on it, and uh, I don't know, I don't have an explanation for it. It could be man-made, alien-made, or natural, I don't know. But I've seen several uh, rocks out here with similar patterns that maybe they're made by water over the millennium. Hard to say. But uh, for right now, uh, this is a flat top, and uh, let's just see what's over here real quick, if there's anything interesting. Then we'll kind of stop and have lunch. Might even be able to do a live stream if I could pull a signal out here. Yeah, let's come on down over here. I just want to see what's in this canyon. If I can get down there easily, then I'll go down there. But otherwise, um, I don't want to push it. I mean, I would love to have a drone out here and just kind of scout all these areas, but because I don't have one. cliffs over here and again I could probably get down there but there's no guarantee I can get out or get back up because if I get to a cliff or something I'm gonna have to climb back up the way I came and it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty grueling I can do it but it comes to a point where you push your body so much it's like man your body just kind of gives out 
so there's no reason to really kill ourselves. I do need to climb back up here to get out of here though, at the very minimum to get back over this hill down to Jome Guzzler, but I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna see if I could skirt uh, the elephant up there and get around the other side, maybe even out to this plateau if there's anything on the other side. I did make a video, MK Found, uh, it's on my channel right now, and uh, it's my most popular video, and it was in one of the other canyons over there that I found, and it's a cave in the shape of an M that goes in, it's on the side of a cliff, and uh, it's what Kenny described, and it does go in about 12 feet, and it is the closest thing to an M cave that I found out here. It is perfect shape of an M, so it's an M cave, is it the M cave? I don't know, I don't feel vibrating, so you never know. At any rate, let's, uh, come back up to the top and find a place for lunch and we'll go from there all right we're back on the top of flat top here this little kind of a uh, area should make a great uh, day camping spot we can have lunch here a nice place to sit down and lean our back up against this the cliff over there so let's eat lunch and go from there all right absolutely beautiful day there is zero wind up here just none and it's usually pretty windy up here we got breakfast skillet and uh I just put water, I usually use three quarters of a bottle or so. Um, it's not heating it up or anything, but I'm hungry and tired. And at this point, it really doesn't matter to me if it's hot or cold. So we're gonna sit here. Um, like I said, it's a nice little spot to rest, take off our pack for a while and uh, just chill. And we'll eat breakfast and go from there. I wanna get down into really Robin Canyon and follow it all the way out. Problem with that is, um, Bighorn sheep skeleton somewhere on the side of that cliff of mountain over there. That peak right there, um, if you can see it, that's where I had lunch into the live stream last week. And Jeff Claus said Marshall Rock is over there somewhere. And as is really Robbins Canyon. So this one here, I don't think this is really Robbins Canyon. I think really Robbins Canyon is the next one over. And again, I don't have the GPS coordinates of these locations. I mean, I've seen them on a map. You gotta kind of guesstimate. Um, and yes, I can get down there, but folks, again, I'm not on my A game today. And this, uh, this injury I got earlier is starting to hurt. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do a quick live stream here. And uh, after that, climb back up here, maybe try to make it to the other side of the elephant and see if I could see an easy way down. If I can't, if it's just cliffs, I'm going to go back to the guzzler and head back to the truck and just call it a day. You've, you've got to be fully prepared to survive out here because if you're not, if you're not, you've already seen what can happen if you're not watching yourself. And, uh, you know, if that's the worst thing that happens out here, we're in good shape, but anything can happen. This, this is a desert. I mean, you could scream as loud as you, as loud as you want. Just say, ah, ah, damn, there's a serious echo. You hear that? Now that's weird. It echoed to this canyon and off to the next one. Ah! Holy cow. That's weird. It echoed this whole canyon and somehow I heard it on the other side of the canyon. And there's nobody around. I thought I heard something behind me, a dog or something. There it is again. Animal of some sort. Anyway, the point is, you could scream as loud as you want out here and all you're gonna get is echoes. Nobody's around to help you. And it's 100% on you to get yourself out of here, which is what I'm gonna to try to do now. Um, again, let me see if I get enough signal for a live stream and then we're going to um, head back up there and screw it over towards the elephant. All right, I just completed the live stream. Uh, it's five minutes, so those of you asked, why don't I do a longer live stream? I struggled to pick up a signal out here. I somehow got three bars here on top of flat top because the highway's way out there in the distance. Uh, but I keep moving on these hikes. I don't stay in one spot very long. Um, but that's why I just want to, you know, do a quick live stream out here, give you guys a taste of what it's like to be out here live, and uh, also kind of a preview for the next video. So that's why the short, little shorts and everything, kind of around five minutes and so. Uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to climb to the top of this hill. We're going to go across the saddle towards Elephant Rock. And uh, if we can safely get around Elephant Rock, we're going to. If we can't, we're going to go around the other side. But I think we can get to this top, of, probably get around Elephant Rock, but I won't know until we're up there. So 
putting one foot in front of the other, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Um, my leg is starting to get sore a little bit. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if it's actually getting sore or if it's just mentally knowing that there's there's a wound there that I don't want to get infected that's mentally getting sore. But on the way, I feel perfectly fine. I mean, I feel better after eating something, but I'm still not on my A game. I mean, I come out here, I feel like I could just, I could just take on the world. Um, but some days I come out here, it's like, man, I'd just rather be home in bed. Um, I'm just looking over there at that tree. It's kind of weird that all these, there's greenery everywhere, but that one tree is dead. And uh, it's just kind of weird. It almost looks like there's something under it. You know, let me pull out the binoculars and check over there really quick. I'm just, maybe that is something over there. I don't know. Uh, I just put out these binoculars, my Steiner T1028, and uh, looking over there at that tree, that kind of dead tree out there, it was just unusual. This, all the other trees in the area are green. That one is dead. It looks like a rock rolled down and hit it. I don't think that would kill a tree, but uh, I couldn't see what was under there, and it's a big boulder somehow. Um, at any rate, I'm going to put the binoculars away. We're going to keep on going and head back up the hill. Just for the record, phantom footsteps. I do continue to hear thumping off in the distance. Now, I know what a gunshot sounds like. It's not a gunshot. It sounds like somebody threw a rock. This time we just one thump. Come from out there somewhere. It's weird today. There's it's dead silent. There is zero wind, I mean like none, and that's unusual out here. No wind, not even really a breeze or anything. Do you remember in, um, what was it, Search for the Mysterious Cross video? Um, there was a point where, when I was at the highest point in the mountain to near the spring, I felt a sense of really foreboding where everything got really quiet. Well, everything is really quiet right now, but I don't feel that sense of foreboding like I did before. Not really. It's just dead silent out here, like everything stopped. I mean, just dead silence. But I'm not really afraid or uneasy like I was before. It's just, it's like the world stopped. Dead silent. It's almost like you feel like you're the last person in the world. There's no people anymore. No cars, no sounds, nothing. Just dead silence. And believe it or not, that's unusual out here. It's usually some kind of a noise, whether it's wind or an animal off in the distance or something. I just never know what you're gonna run into out here. Uh, Joe May Canyon is a very strange place. If anything weird or paranormal were to happen in the desert, National Wildlife Refuge, I do believe Joe May Canyon could be the place for it. And it's just on the other side of this hill. We're climbing, slowly but surely. We made it to the top. Um, flat top down there, so we just did a live stream and had lunch. I feel better after eating lunch. <sighs> I kind of craving something sweet. I wish I brought some dessert, but I didn't. I got a cliff bar that I usually keep for emergencies. I mean, God forbid we get caught out here overnight. I want to have at least some food. Otherwise, we'll be in a world of hurt. Still my guzzler down there. Um, I'm going to do it right now. That's the elephant. We've named this huge rock the elephant because it kind of looks like a sleeping elephant. I don't know how elephants sleep if they lay down or stand up. But at any rate, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to try to see if I can get, and I don't think I can, around it this way. And a lot of times you really can't see if there's a way to go unless you're right there. Um, if I can't go this way, maybe I can kind of skirt this way. If I can't do it safely either way, uh, or even down and around, then I'm, I've got a choice but to come down. I can definitely skirt the side of the hill, and that might be difficult, and kind of go up over there and see what's on the other side of the elephant here. And that's what I like to do. And then, uh, worst case scenario, just make our way down the hill towards uh, Joe May Guzzler, back out of Joe May Canyon, out of here. Um, as far as the wound, it's doing fine. Um, it doesn't hurt. When I did, when I bent down like this, it did hurt, actually. Um, my biggest fear, of course, is infection. I mean, if there's some bacteria, it's really hard to say what can happen. Um, 
maybe they say it's making a big deal out of nothing, but I mean, you know, you get infected in the wrong place at the wrong time in the right conditions, it can turn into a very serious situation. I usually put antibiotics or antibacterial cream on it. Um, I didn't have any today, and even our alcohol prep pad was bone dry. All I had was some wet wipes, and hopefully that did the trick to wipe it down and bandage it up to keep it clean. But for right now, let's hike over here to the saddle and walk toward the elephant. It can actually be easier for an experienced outdoorsman to get injured because they've done this so many times, they get overconfident and they start taking chances. Like I said before, I just, I was a little tired. I didn't want to come out here. I just want to kind of rest and chill at home. But biggest thing is I've lost a lot of weight doing these hikes. I feel in shape. I've had more energy. I feel younger. And I know if I sit at home, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be feeling it. So I really need to get out and get my body moving and doing some exercise and thus I'm here. But it's fine, because I really love doing this stuff. It's a lot of preparation, you know, coming out here, getting my gear ready, making sure, double checking, triple checking everything, batteries charged the night before, stuff like that. But I don't mind, I really, I really like it. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, uh, the energy I get from staying in shape and coming out here makes me feel a lot younger than I really am. And it's, uh, you know, just one of the ways you can keep old age off is by keep moving. All right, we're at the elephant. Pocket caves, or shall I call them cavities, all over the place. Let's come on up here and see if there's a safe way to get around. Like I said, a lot of times you really don't know until you're right there. I mean, you can see from a distance and kind of judge. Yeah, it's rugged, but I think I can do it, which is good. All right. Um, let us continue. On rock to rock, making sure these rocks are sturdy. That might be a problem. Put on my other gloves. This might be a problem. I think I see an area that uh, there's no even path to and from. So I don't know if I can get past it, we'll see. I don't wanna start sliding down. Yeah, I see right there. I don't know if I can get past that. Come a little bit more. Gone. I don't think I can, not easily. Well, can I climb this? Probably, but this, you gotta be careful because, oh my God, that could be us. Screw it, let's try it. Four points of contact and still holding the GoPro. <clears throat> okay. That was near vertical, we just climbed up. My boots got a great grip. If I can climb this here, then we can do it. And I think we can, but if I can, we're falling. A little plateau we can check out there if we can't. Or you know what? Right there, just like a freaking ladder. I think that might be what be we can do. Okay. Yeah, it's a dangerous climb, but I think I can do it. Okay, okay. Look at this moss growing. You don't see a whole lot of that in the desert because there's not much moisture. Some animal droppings there. Okay. Oh shoot. All right. Crumbling rocks. Putting our foot in places that appear secure. And brush this out of the way. Okay. Push that out of the way. Right there. 
we've got a secure grip lift ourselves up well he's don't let us fall <clears throat> okay okay that's not good off some of this place okay that's pretty secure I look it's secure right there you gotta watch where you put your foot or your hand because you grab something you think it's secure and it's not yeah that could be us but we did make it okay other side of the elephant all right. That was dangerous climbing that up, but these jagged rocks gave us an excellent traction. All right. Here we are. Let's take a look over there. I'd like to get over here but I don't know how safe it is. And last week I felt better about climbing than I do this week. This week, not really that much on the ball. Yeah, I could probably make it down there. where we're stepping okay all right here is a little saddle we've made it to problem now this I can get done easily if I had to but I kind of like to keep going this way now we're in the area of Martian Rock but I think it might be further that way I had it mapped out this way Jeff Claw said it's that way but uh, you can't really be too sure unless somebody dropped a pin move on this way and see if we can get through easily and safely keep thinking about my leg down there where I got stabbed earlier and it feels okay if it didn't I would not keep going if I felt any pain there at all I would not keep going okay let's climb up a little bit over these rocks okay let's see what we can see not losing our balance. It's a little hairy, but I think we can do it. I really do. I don't think it's a big deal. Question is, is it worth it? What's over there? What's up there? We can turn back and head towards the truck, go home and relax. But sometimes in life, there's things you just know you're not gonna do, and that's one thing I know I'm not gonna do. I know me. And uh, I'm gonna carefully Negotiate these rocks. Oh, my foot got twisted right there. Oh my gosh. That's how you sprain an ankle. You gotta be careful. Okay. Just being careful on these jagged rocks. I am wearing my gloves, of course. If I can get right there, it shouldn't be a big deal just to get it go the rest of the way. Done worse. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Okay. These patterns here are quartz, I think it is. Where there's quartz, there's gold. 
Wouldn't that be amazing just to be the only human being ever to be on this side of the rock and uh, have some land landslide of dislodged quartz. And then you see like a, a vein of gold or something. Of course, if I did find gold like that out here, I can assure you, you wouldn't see it on video. I may be a lot of things, but uh, dumb isn't one of them. I publish a video of, uh, of a vein of gold out here that nobody knows about. People from all over the world will be flying out here trying to find it. I don't even like I put a claim out here. It's a, it's a wildlife, it's a wildlife reserve. All right, question is, do I need to go up or down? Down looks a lot more secure and I think that's the way I'm gonna go. Okay. You gotta be careful we see loose rocks like that because you could fall real easy. And these jagged rocks here seem to be fairly sturdy. And if you grab something, make sure it's green and, and alive and it got some roots in the ground. But that's just what I did. Yeah, passed away the whole way. All right. But don't underestimate something that looks easy. You can still slip and fall. And it's not that long of a way down there, but you keep going and tumbling down there, it's gonna suck. That could get us down in the really Robin Canyon area, but like I said, I don't know what's at the end of the canyon, if I can get out to the desert floor or not. But for right now, let's keep on going. And see what's up and over here. All right. Oh man, it's a challenge to get up there. The sun's in our eyes. May have to double back. I see a little plateau that I think we can get to. Oh man. I'm gonna keep rolling film for this, this segment here, this climbing segment, just because there's so many things that could happen. And I know you guys like the suspense part of these videos. All right. I think, yeah. I can get up there, no problem. Might even be able to get down there to the little plateau, which I think is what we're gonna do. Now, if I can find a way down into the desert floor down there, I'm gonna take it. Then it's just navigating the open desert back to the truck. Otherwise, we're coming back the way we came. What's over this? What's over this? Almost looks like a face, doesn't it? The face in the rock, smiling. Let's keep going. All right, almost the top. And look at this view, wow. Wow. Amazing. I really think I can make it out this way. And I think the my MK found video was one canyon over. This might be Mormon Rock. And I think we can get to Mormon Rock. I don't even know what Mormon Rock is. It's just a feature that uh, either Silver Heels or Warlock Wrath, uh, Mormon Rocks, I don't have a whole lot of info on it. So Claw, again, if you know what Mormon Rock is, let me know. I think I can get to that plateau over there. And I think I can get to this plateau here, and I think I can get to there and make it into this canyon, and then right at the desert floor. And then up one more is the M Cave Canyon, where I found uh, from my M Cave found video is one more canyon. So it's very possible that we may run into a situation where there's a cliff and I can't get past it, but I think I'm going to take a chance and do the complete loop around. I think I'm gonna chance it. I've just gotta find a way down here to this plateau, down here to that plateau, down there. Right down there, I can't tell. I'm gonna pull out the binos and see if I see any what looks like it might be a cliff. If it looks smooth sailing, I'm definitely going down this way, then we'll loop around. Once we're in the open desert, 
that's gravy all the way back to the truck is just a long walk as well so i'm pull out the binos and see if i can see what's down there all right i looked and uh towards the bottom there is a cliff but i can't tell if it's too steep to get down or if it's just something really that's really nothing so i can't tell but i'm gonna chance it now i might be able to make it this way it looks like some cliffs over there but uh what i've got to do now is find a way to get right down to this lower level safely which i think means backtracking i'm going to risk it going down there because i think uh regardless this way or this way we'll probably find a way to get uh, around an obstacle if it is a cliff or something I don't think it is, uh, and even if it is, and we can somehow get down, I think from there on out it's smooth sailing to the desert floor. And I, I'm pretty sure that's, that's Mormon rock down there, so I'll check the GPS real quick and then we're going to start making our way down here somehow. Before we get started, I just, uh, I don't know if you can see it out there, right about, anyway, some, somewhere right around there, you can see kind of a little reflection. And I knew it's a vehicle, I thought it was my truck, so I just put out the binoculars, it's not my truck, it's a white SUV. And it's just stopped right there. I like to think it's somebody enjoying nature hiking, but unfortunately the, uh, the realist in me doesn't trust people and I wanna make sure it's not somebody messing with my truck. I did lock the truck, of course, and I don't have any valuables inside there, but still, I don't, I don't trust people. Um, I wish I could think more positive, but that's just the world we live in. So, like I said, check the binoculars, some sort of a white SUV, they're just parked there, hopefully they're hiking. Um, I was thinking about, do I wanna go this way to, through Joe McCannon to, and get back as quick as I can to the truck, or do I want to make my way down here, out there, and make my way well around, all the way around? <sighs> Either way, it's probably going to be an hour to get to the truck. So my original plan was to go down, and I don't want to throw the whole video and hightail it back to the truck just because I'm suspicious that there's a vehicle out there because they're just parked, no reason to believe there's some doing something. Either way, it's it's 1.6, where they are is about 1 point, it's a one and three quarters miles. So it's, it's quite a ways out there. Yeah. I'm just trying to think which way is faster. I'm gonna go down this way, screw it. If I can get down to this lower level, that is. I mean, yeah, I think I can do it right here. It just makes me nervous. I'm, I'm the guy that leaves the house on vacation and gets about 10 miles down the road and has to drive all the way home to make sure you close the garage door, or lock the doors or something. I just, uh, oh my gosh, uh, almost lost my balance there. Okay. This, oh shoot, that's why you don't grab dead branches, because they break on you. This should get us to that first plateau. I just hope this day doesn't turn out to be an ordeal. I just kind of want to get home and relax. Look at the views out there, man. Look at that. You ready? Here we go. is tethered let's keep going when come on these hikes i'm the guy that says there's always a way this way i'm seeing sheer cliffs i don't see a way it'd be real dangerous uh that's just a straight up drop off i thought we could easily get to this plateau but we can't unless we climb down these rocks here that is the only way that i see and there may be too big of a drop for that so what i'm gonna do is get down here look over here and see if I can safely climb down. If I can, even over there, it's, I mean, it's real iffy. I just don't know if I can make it out this way. Keep seeing that shining out there, that, that vehicle just parked out there. I don't know who it is. Makes me nervous somebody else out here. Well, 
obviously the first step is to get down this next level and then assess the situation from there. Now if you look down here, that's too dangerous. I would not do that. But over here, I want to see if it's possible. <clears throat> okay. Definitely not here. I mean, look at that. Definitely not. There. Uh, we may have to turn back. I'm just not seeing a safe way. I'm gonna have to get closer to see. Make it right down here. No. No, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I'll tell you what, life or death, I could probably jump down there if we literally had no other option, I could. But I get down there, friends, there is no getting back up. And on my, on my personal rule, I don't get myself into, some, into something that I can't get out of. So that's a one-way trip if we get down there. And there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee that we're not gonna run into a cliff down there that we can't get past. Now there could be a cliff right here. Looks like there is. And even if I make it over here, I can't be sure what's on the other side of this rock. Oh, well, I take that back. I do know. I wonder. I don't think so. If I can get past this point right here, over there, I think I can make it all the way over there. But I don't know if I can safely do it. The only way to find out is to get down there to a point where I can get back up if I have to. I'll have to go straight if I can, but this is some of the most dangerous climbing I've ever done. No, I don't think so. I just don't. Well, I don't like backtracking though, that's the only thing. I'm carefully looking at every step and I think I might, might be able to do it. Because if we can get to that saddle, I think we can get to some other spots. It's just getting down to it. You know what? It's, it's real dangerous, but I think I can do it. Down and across. Yeah, I think I can do it. Get over here, maybe. The good news is we're getting excellent traction on these on these uh, sharp rocks. But I've got to get down and over there and back up over there. My God, what the hell am I doing up here? This is so dangerous. Get secure footing here. There's no loose rocks. Okay. Not right here. Let's make it down and over. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. But straight down there, where we're gonna go. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Okay. <coughs> Ooh.
Okay. I'm easing myself down. In here, rocks falling behind me. Oh man, this is gonna be tight. I don't wanna go back up there, jeez. Okay. Remember, we get in a situation we can't get past, we gotta climb this. And I can assure you, even though you're not here, it's every bit as dangerous as it looks. And I'm nervous about the prospect of having to climb that. But I think I can get over there. I think I can. So you guys watching, Obviously, I made, it, I made it out of here if you're seeing a video, but uh, at this point in the video, I know as much as you do. And I think I can scale the side over there and get to the top of that saddle. Is that a cliff on the other side? I don't think so. Because uh, my calculations, this is the elephant. Okay. You're tired and not feeling it. Nothing like a little adrenaline to get to wake you up. Okay. Oh my gosh, ouch, ouch, ouch. I'm bending myself there where I got stabbed earlier and it hurt. Because I put pressure on it. But it feels all right. Okay. It's a long way down, folks. Oh my God, what am I doing here? If we get that saddle over there, I think, I think we'll be okay. Could be wrong. I'm coming up across a spot here where it looks like I might not be able to get past. That would mean we're gonna have to go back this way. And oh my God, I don't even see where we came. It's just so freaking dangerous. I've got to find a way. I have to. I have to find a way to that plateau over there. may uh, very well be one of the most dangerous climbs we've ever done. I know I've said that before, and I can assure you each time I say it, it's, it's a little bit more dangerous than the last. It doesn't look like that big a deal, but believe me, really deep, uh, deep, uh, what do you call it, um, areas like this can come up. Even this, look, there's no foothold. So what I'm gonna have to do Holy shit, we slide down there, we're dead. I'm okay, okay. I need to clear these rocks off. Okay. Yeah, we slide down there, it's all over. This is the most dangerous thing I've ever done. I'm gonna try to jump for this spot right there. And if I have to, I can grab that bush. Oh shit, please. Let's make it. One, two, three. Okay. That would not have been good if we fell. Okay. Yeah, if we fell, we would we would have kept on going and would have got seriously hurt.
even here. So we gotta just be careful. See, started slipping right there. I'm watching where I'm stepping, watching for loose rocks. Holy cow, this is dangerous stuff. Lifting ourselves up. Okay, we're almost there. This is uh, this is an ordeal. This is the tough part. Like I said, if you are not 100% alert on what's going on, and you slip, it's all over. Okay. Stop. Assess. Should be able to make it there for no problem, and the saddle is right there. But look at that deep canyon. What's in between us and the saddle? Okay. I'm, I'm stopping to watch every square inch that we need to step on. And so far, I don't see anything that... Uh, oh yeah, I can make sure stuff like that's out of the way. I think we can make it so far. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. If we slide here, the bushes that we can grab, if we start sliding, I need to get straight over there and around this bend. And maybe some new gloves, which I do have at home, I believe. Okay. All right. Just carefully make our way over here. Down here, without sliding too much. Uh, all right, almost there. See, I can't tell if that's a cliff or if we can keep going to that saddle. Almost looks like a path here, maybe an animal path. It's weird up here, I could have sworn I smelled perfume, but that's impossible. <clears throat> Just goes to show you. You see things, you hear things, you smell things. It's a very strange place. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna say we're home free, but uh, the saddle is right there and I, and I see a clear path to it. Down and over and up. I will say this, when you're hiking on stuff like this and you're worried, you know how dangerous it is, for this moment in time, this becomes the most important thing in your life, getting out of here safely. So whatever else you may be thinking of, you ain't thinking of it. All you're thinking of is getting out of here safely. Self-preservation has a way of prioritizing your thoughts. That almost looks like a dog on person footprint. I haven't been up here before. All right, back side of the elephant. Look at these views. I really want to get down there. I just don't see a, a safe way to do it. Let's get to the saddle and assess, assess the situation from there. I'm from the school of thought that there's always a way to continue through. Most of the time there is. Sometimes there's just no way, but uh, in this situation, we've gotten to the saddle. If I'm not mistaken, it should be Joe May Guzzler down the other side. And there's the elephant. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem getting down there. That's a guzzler. Got a burn pit way off in the distance. Sheep peak out there. Elephant there and uh, yeah. Let's keep going. If I 
at least the top of this point here and see what's out there. Looks like somebody going up more well road out there. Okay, just to show you these rugged cliffs right there on the back side of the elephant, that's what we just navigated. The elephant. Okay. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Breathtaking views. Now, last weekend we were down there on that saddle. We we're actually higher. Overlooking the elephant. Okay. Yeah, the elephant. It's definitely the highlight of the trip. I think from here all we gotta do is get down to the guzzler and make our way into the canyon and we're we're home free. Pretty much. All right, all right, continuing our track along these cliffs. I could probably get to this little plateau down there. Might even be able to get down in this canyon. But uh, like before in that one, there's just no way. This canyon, uh, shoot, it's either this one or the next one is the M Cave Canyon, where I found an M Cave. And I think it's the next one over. Just real weary about getting into something I can't get out of. Those uh, those cliffs we were just on over there. I mean, take a look. That's that's a sheer cliff face right there. That's that's something that uh, bighorn sheep would struggle with, and we did it. And I was really nervous about it too. There was a couple of spots where, believe me, if we slipped, it would have been all over. So we're just continuing along here, on top of a mountain, and. Uh, a little bit further. Kind of an herbal smell in the air from some of these uh, plants and stuff. I know I can get down there. Let's, let me see what's over here. Ugh. That rock is not stable, so I don't want to put my full weight on it. All right. More cliffs. I can get to that saddle and make our way down here most of the way. Hell, I could probably even get in that canyon. But I don't think I'm going to. Almost looks like a prospect pit over there. Let me pull out the binos and check that out. I don't think it is, but it's weird. Um, yeah, I, I probably could get in that canyon, and I think that could be the... No, that's not the M Cave Canyon. Anyway, this, uh, this saddle right here... I'm pretty sure that's where we were last weekend. Um, just trying to orient myself to where we are. This kind of row of jagged cliffs up top you could see. The other side of that is Joe May Canyon. And uh, I'm looking all along there for any kind of opening and I'm not seeing anything. So the best thing to do maybe to get down here to that saddle and just come right back straight down and around the canyon. Or we could even heck, go back the same way we did last week. That, yeah, that might be best, but it's all going to be getting down here near the, and getting around this rock here, probably run that way, get into that kind of saddle area there. All right, uh, we're making our way down. It's really no good place to put my foot. I'm going to have to just kind of uh, <clears throat> just go for it. It's just kind of a little rock arch right there. That's kind of cool. Uh, making our way down here. Trying to hold on. Ooh. All these rocks I'm grabbing are moving. Oh my gosh. Ah! This is how landslides happen. That might be what happened to that big horn sheep skeleton last week. Oh my gosh. Believe it or not, I feel much better about this section than I do the back side of the elephant. Okay, down to this plateau and we'll assess the situation from there. Okay. All 
right. Yeah, there's nothing but cliffs down there. I might be able to make it, but I don't think so. I'm gonna go down and around. Oh man. If we can go around, I don't know. We have to just go down. So you can get a plateau on the other side of this big, big rock. It almost looks like there's a trail. And indeed there might be. Bighorn sheep, animals perhaps. Animals tend to uh, take the same path they always do. It's a common trick of, uh, of hunters is if you set up an animal trap, you set it up uh, along a known path for animals. It certainly can't be a people trail. Not very many people come out here. All right. See, stuff like this is no problem. It's that rocky stuff, that uh, loose rocky stuff that makes me worried. All right. So I didn't check what I thought was a prospect pit out there, but I'm close enough where I could see it. It doesn't look like a prospect pit. It's just some natural crumbling rocks. All right, smooth sailing from here, across over there, and up on top, and then from the top, down and uh, it'll probably be a little hairy coming down but i think we could do it it'd save time from instead of coming all the way down and around and in the joe may canyon i just heard something probably that crow again For some reason that crow seems to be around here quite a bit let's keep going should be like i said fairly flat if we just kind of ne negotiate the top of these uh top of this ridge line all the way over there so here's what I'm talking about, Martian rock. This isn't the Martian rock, but this is a rock that's got some, uh, what appears to be some lines in it. Cracks uh, formed by water, it's really hard to say, but perhaps this is what Martian rock looked like, something along this level. Because we've seen this before, and it almost looks like, um, right at like the letter A there, doesn't it? Or I guess upside down, it could be uh, a V for Kenny Beach. Hard to say. At any rate, let's keep on going. Burning daylight, it's uh, on the clock, 3.53 miles, 1,400 foot elevation gain, four hours and uh, two hours, 15 minutes. It doesn't seem like right here for four hours, but believe me, I'm watching the clock um, and it see doesn't seem like that long, but it is. I know Jeff Claw talked about missing time um, out here. He was by the visitor center like 6 a.m. and he got back at 6 p.m. and only remembered like four to six hours of the hike, even though he was out here for 12 hours. So really hard to say. There's been a few times I've been out here and I I thought uh, it was earlier than it really was and it was later than I thought it was. So I don't know, hard to say. Hasn't been proven yet, but we'll see. One thing for sure is Apple Watch is tra tracking us. So when we get back and stop the clock and and take a look at our route, if there's any, uh, if there's any, uh, the pauses or anything or that could indicate uh, missing time all right now from here it doesn't look that bad but i want to make sure there's no like intense climbs or anything and i'm not seeing any but i mean from here it looks a lot fine but once you get to it it can be a lot more intense than it looks so let's just make our way down to the saddle and worst case scenario we can go down any of these hillsides down towards the uh down towards Joe May Valley and we'll be fine. I think the worst part is behind us unless we get into something else. But you just never know out here. Just a nice leisurely stroll on the top of the mountain, not a big deal. Nothing dangerous about this. It's just a walk in the park. Now, what do we have up here? Continue to be a walk in the park. I think the saddle I was at last week was up there. I think I'm gonna have to get to it again. Otherwise, we gotta come all the way down there, all the way around back. That's probably the shortest way. So let's do it. All right, animal droppings there. Uh, it's hard to tell, I'm not gonna touch them, but it looks like they're somewhat fresh. They usually dry out pretty more than that. So bighorn sheep, I'm guessing. 
What do you ask about animals and bighorn sheep? There could be one standing right out there and we wouldn't even see it if they just uh, freeze. They could be on the peaks over there and we wouldn't even see it. So unless you stay in one spot, they're, they're really kind of hard to spot. But take a look around how vast of a place this is. If Kenny Beach were to disappear, he could be in a canyon up there. Any one of these side canyons he could be in. These weren't searched. Nobody searches those. You could fly a drone over this whole valley and still miss a lot of stuff. Look at this the uphill incline of it. See how it goes kind of up higher? I'm actually surprised there's not as much snow up there this time of year. There usually is. Even on uh, Mount Charleston over there, there's not a lot of snow this year. And the today is just an absolutely gorgeous day. Beautiful. Perfect for being outdoors. Okay. Freeze-dried food was great. I hit the spot, but I'm starting to kind of get hungry again, so I'm thinking about what I want to have for dinner. Once we get back. The elephant is just uh, south of the distance. This right here is M Cave Canyon. Um, not Kenny Beach's M Cave, I don't know, maybe it is, but Further down there a little bit, off to, the one of the, off to the side, up on the side of a hill, is a cave that goes in about 12 feet. It's in the shape of a perfect letter M. Uh, it's not about ground level, but I mean, we already know that Kenny Beach could have been mistaken. Um, but that cave is the closest thing to an M cave I found out here. And that's in the video, M cave found, if you want to take a look at that one. Um, I could probably make it down there. If I skirt the side of a hill, I'm, I'm fairly certain I can get in that valley. Only problem is, I get in this valley, come down that way, around, all the way around back to the truck. That I would guesstimate is three miles. If I come down here, it's probably one or two. It's, it's, it's a lot quicker. And I'm gonna opt for this, for this way, instead of going down there. If you wanna see what's in this valley, check out the MK Found video. And uh, I remember because all these kind of jagged rocks, these monolithic rocks, I remember seeing it from down there, wondering what's up here. And then when uh, uh, Silver Heels and Warlike Rats are talking about Martian Rock, where I saw it on their map, I thought was up here. And I thought these rocks just kind of looked like Mars and this was Martian Rock. But evidently Martian Rock is a rock with some purported alien writing on it or design, pattern design that looked like alien writing. Found something similar out on uh, in Picture Canyon on the Beast. But from what Jeff Claw was saying, like I said, and I keep repeating myself, but look, there's people that skip through these videos that need to hear this stuff. Marsh Rock is actually further that way on the other side of the elephant over there, um, based on what I've been told by Jeff Claw and them. I don't have an exact location for it. But it's out here somewhere, and I have no reason to believe that it's any more uh, alien riding on it than things we've seen already. So we searched for it. We couldn't find it. Um, otherwise, you've seen similar Martian rocks out here with this kind of weird alien writing. It looks unnatural, but it probably is natural. It's just, you know, formed by water over millions of years. Anyway, where we're going right now is uh, to this plateau here. I don't think we can get any further that way. Uh, so we're probably going to have to come over here and come down the exact same way we did in the uh, Joe May Peak video. And then make a way to Joe May Canyon back to the truck. And hopefully whoever is in that white SUV that we saw um, is a friendly hiker and not somebody up to no good. To get over there, a lot of jagged rocks. We could probably make it, well... It would be tough to make it to here, but honestly, I think our best bet is to go back right here to the same way we went last week. Scale the cliff down, it's not that big a deal, and then get into Jomay Valley and back to the truck. You can see where the sun is. It's started to come down. It's, uh, it's 2.30. Uh, it gets dark here in Southern Nevada. Those mountains right there, sun goes behind it. Um, the beach in California, we got nothing but horizon. It might stay dark later, but here in Southern Nevada, close to these mountains, when the sun goes behind those, it gets dark here. So right now, it's still somewhat light at 5 p.m. Earlier um, in December, it was like around 4.30, it was getting dark, but now it's 5 p.m. So slowly but surely, the summer is coming, which means even more hikes. And when the days are long and we're on our, we're on our game, that's... Uh, that's we've got our long range hikes out there and we do have a couple long range hikes planned. There's the winged demon or slash crow calling again, you hear him? But yeah, um, Sheep Peak, I wanna see Sheep Peak. You wanna see Sheep Peak. We're gonna see Sheep Peak. And um, it may even come out here at night for that one. Get up there during the day, I'm not sure. But yeah, Sheep Peak, uh, 
And there's a, a specific location in the foothills under Sheep Peak where I received word from one of the viewers that Kenny Beach's, um, some evidence from Kenny Beach's disappearance will be found. And he got this information, semi-supernatural means. I mean, take it for yourself if it's true or not, but I'd like to check it out. Now there's true crows up there together and they're squawking at me. This is the same area where uh, they squawked at me last time. So clearly they live out here. They're not too pleased about me being out here, but at any rate, I'm here and they can't do nothing about it. And uh, as soon as I get over here, I'll start getting back down. And these crows can have this area back to themselves. These winged demons. All right, there's the elephant off in distance. Elephant, Joe May Peak. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's Joe May Peak right there. That's the elephant right there. And we're on the back side of that. Man, that's a long walk. So right now we gotta navigate ourselves down this hill. <sighs> Same hill we did last video, Joe May Peak, so. I'm not too worried about I'm gonna film it because if you want to see us navigating down here, just watch Joe May Peak. And then from here we get to the canyon floor and back to the truck. I hear squawking crows, of course, but I keep hearing thumping off in the distance. Did you hear that? Kind of a low thump off in the distance. Could be something with Indian Springs, but there's no aircraft in the air. It's kind of quiet. I don't know what it could be. Well, let's make our way down. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's doable. We did it before. I remember that kind of yucca tree right there, somewhere around there. We'll get past that and uh, make our way down, and we'll be all right. Just a hop, skip, and a jump, and hopefully not a tumble, and we'll be down. Believe it or not, you exert a lot of energy coming down a hill like this. Going up it is even worse. And uh, you really have to conserve your energy when you came out here, because I, I have no idea what, what's gonna what's gonna happen. So, which is why when we did that that climb on the backside of the elephant, that that took a lot of uh, that took all of our energy, and um, we had to have a clear mind for that. So that's why you don't want to exert yourself too much, make a mistake later on, because you never know what's gonna happen. But for right now, we're uh, we're almost at the bottom. It's just a few rocks to get over, and then we're down there. What I don't like about going downhill like this is, oh my god, oh that hurt. Okay. Oh shit! You can slip for one, but when you go down, your foot slides forward in the boot and it kind of jams your toe up against the end of the boot because uh, um, your boots loosen up as you walk. So your foot kind of moves forward and it just keeps like jabbing your toe. And uh, you can get bruises and things like that on your toes. It's, it doesn't really hurt long term, but it's just uncomfortable. All right. That's why I try to stop every now and then cinch up my boots tight. Because they will loosen out here. All right. Almost there. All right, and like that. I made it down. Oh, made it down that freaking monster. My feet are sore. My leg is still a little bit sore where I got stabbed. But I think we're all right. So I get back to the truck, get home and eat something and rest. Like I said, I don't want to come out here in the first place. I was a little tired, but I'm glad I did. I needed the exercise and you know, they say a body in motion stays in motion, a body at rest stays at rest, and that's that's very true. The more time you spend at home resting, the harder it is when you finally come out here. So my advice to all you folks who want to do this, start moving. Even if it means just a quick walk around the block once a day, that's a start. One day you're walking around the block, the next day you're hiking 
10 miles in the desert. Maybe not, but you get the idea. All right, let's get out of here and should be a easy trek to the truck. A party balloon. You see lots of these in the desert. And people always say, pick them up. Well, I bet hope it's a nice birthday. I know I'm not the janitor of the desert, but you know what, just this once, just this once, I'll make a difference. I'll take this with me. Just to make you guys happy, so I should pick these up. I'm going back to the truck anyway, it's half a mile. And uh, situation like this, there's really no reason why I can't pick it up. But if you're really that concerned about party balloons, mention me your address and I'll mail it to you. Otherwise, it's going in the trash. And that's what's up. All right, we're getting closer. The truck should be around this bend up here. And uh, it's been a long hike. On the clock, 450, almost five hours, almost five miles, 1500 foot elevation gain, 3 p.m. We picked up a party balloon. <sighs> Paranormal activity on this trip. We heard phantom footsteps out here earlier today. I thought I heard voices like a child laughing or something. Um, or maybe even a dog barking. Strange smells, I thought it smelled perfume. Um, not really any missing time. I mean, it doesn't seem like I was out here that long, but clearly I was. But Joe May Valley is a very strange place. Like I said, this is a couple miles up that way is where the Kenny Beach mine is, where his cell phone was found. So, Phantom Footsteps are reported out here. Myself, Sean Kana, Jay Chuck. Um, who else? reported them I don't know I think um Scott not all as well it's all in this this strange canyon here but yeah it's that's it let's keep on going we're almost there this is the point I get worried when I can't see my truck uh it's out there somewhere but uh, I do see it actually I know you can't in the video but trust me I can see it it's uh right where I left it hopefully all intact and uh we're almost there maybe half a mile or so to get there truck on the hill but it's up there and uh there's a little cave we saw on the way out could walk to it there's no reason we've been out there many times oh. trying to get to the truck dead branch brushed up against that wound earlier and that kind of hurt a little bit but other than that it feels perfectly fine Made it back, there's the truck. Joe May Canyon is a strange and mysterious place. You see a small cave, that agave burn pit over there. The M Cave could be anywhere in these mountains. But I'll tell you what isn't in these mountains. One party balloon bag. It's my good deed of the day. Ah, uh, yes. There's the truck. Joe May Canyon, a strange and mysterious place. There's that little cave we saw on the way out, Gave Burn Pit. In these mountains, somewhere in these mountains, could be the final resting place of Kenny Beach or the M Cave itself if it does exist. We're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep coming out here in these mountains and doing these videos. Snow's already starting to melt. It's a nice warm day. I'll bet it'd be gone by midweek. When the days get long, that's when we'll do our long range hikes. But for this, this time, that's it for this adventure, my friends. I sincerely thank you for joining. I sincerely thank your support. Please subscribe and like. Like increases popularity so more people see the videos, the more subscriptions. Uh, it really helps me a lot. And uh, you guys are the reason I do these videos. So if you don't subscribe, why should I even keep coming out here? I mean, they're free. Just subscribe right now. Just come on, click, click subscribe. It's, it's right there. That's all you gotta do. It's, it's simple, but that's it for this adventure, my friends. Until the next time, we'll see you in the next adventure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All of my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. 
My name is Steve from Las Vegas, and these are my adventures.